to compare what's on the box versus real life. Greetings to Squid Defenders. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of post-shoot analysis of the Browning X-Point 95 grain 380 auto. First, I'll show you the details from the shoot, and then we will cut into this block and take some measurements. Okay, the snow has let up a bit, so we're going to try to get some crony readings on these Browning X-Points. Five feet away. Nine thirty one. Nine fifty two. Nine twenty five. Nine fifty five. Nine thirteen. So pretty good consistency, actually. Average of nine hundred and thirty five feet per second. Not bad out of the G42. Comparing the stats we got from the chronograph with the stats on the back of the box, the expected muzzle velocity is a thousand feet per second. I assume that's out of a four inch test barrel. The G42 of course has a three and a quarter inch test barrel roughly, but that is about a half an inch longer than any other 380 that I have used on this channel. We did actually get pretty comparable results. Not quite a thousand feet per second, but pretty good, honestly. Are these things gonna perform as promised on the box? Well, we got a 12 inch gel block, a three and a quarter inch barrel, four layers of denim, and we'll give them a whirl. Place your bets now. Actually, yeah, but no, just a little bit of expansion. A few petals peeled back, but I'd say the Browning X point out of a three and a quarter inch G42 is worth a shot, so to speak. The Browning X points do kind of perform okay in the denim test. But let's see if we can get them to overexpand and stop short in bare gel. Whoa. Whoa. Now that's what they're supposed to look like. But they do only get to eh, 10 inches. Still, 10 inches is pretty okay for 380. We're back from the test day footage and we'll cut into the block in a minute here. First we want to put the caliper on the denim shoot round. Okay, zero that out. First we'll try to figure out the widest expansion on that denim shot. Looks like we are in millimeters and we do not want to be in millimeters, we want to be in inches. So 0.48, 48 caliber. From the denim round, you can see that it was mainly just the jacket material that peeled back. And the lead really didn't, uh, it crushed a little bit. There's a little bit of mushrooming you can see right there. And there's the denim residue in the center of that hollow point cavity. But that's still that's still pretty good to get that many petals pulling back. And uh, obviously we had a, a tree stump blocking behind the water jug and this penetrated right to the back of the water jug, bounced off the tree stump and, uh, and got captured in the water jug behind the 12 inch block of gel. And then we followed up with a uh, with a bare gel shot. Next thing we're going to want to do then, obviously, 
is retrieve that bear gel shot, which just briefly to confirm here, we did this out at the range, but that has definitely penetrated front edge of the bullet just to 10 inches, maybe a whisker short of 10, but close enough. We'll round it off. All right, so let's, um, well, we, let me look at these, look at these tracks here because there's a point I want to make. Okay, there you can kind of see the expansion cavities in the gel. And, and obviously the denim shot is going to have a little bit darker visible expansion because there's going to be denim debris in there. But the bare gel shot is not that much wider, even... Even taking that into account, let's, let's zoom it in here, right, to the expansion, uh, the expansion cavity portion. So you can really, really compare the bear gel shot on top and the denim shot on the bottom. The expansion cavities are actually quite comparable. Maybe there's a little bit more expansion with the bear gel shot. And obviously, ultimately, the... Uh, the expanded projectile is dramatically wider. And we'll dig that out and take a look at it here and measure it up to compare with the bear gel or to compare with the denim shot. But there is definitely an expansion signature with that denim shot. All right, so let's just put that in the background here. Keep it in mind. A maximum expansion on that of 0.48 of an inch. And then let's pry out that bear gel shot. Let's look at the broadest possible diameter on that. 0 0.5695. 0 0.5695, that's over 50% expansion from 0.355 initial diameter. That's a pretty good bullet to get 10 inches deep. Now, again, we're... We're using a three and a quarter inch test barrel. And by comparison, the other the other 380s I've tested are either 2.84 or 2.75 inches of barrel. So not necessarily an apples to apples comparison. And we're definitely gonna have to test some rounds, particularly the the, uh, the Remington Golden Saber and, and maybe even the Gold Dot, the Spear Gold Dot to get a more apples to apples comparison because I think the extra half an inch of barrel really is producing quite a bit of additional performance. I think the Glock 42, in addition to having a heavier spring and being an excellent 380 plus, plus P platform, will also probably produce better results out of sort of the high end 380 rounds that we have tested in the past. So we're probably gonna have to retest uh, several of those before we settle on a round that is the best. And plus P is not Sammy spec in 380. It is in 45 ACP, it is in nine millimeter, it is in 38 special. Plus P is definitely Sammy certified in some calibers, but it is definitely not Sammy certified in 380. So I wanted to get a, I wanted to get a, a gun that I was confident shooting 380 plus P out of and I have to say, I'm startled so far at how accurately I shoot the G42. Maybe it's the fact that I'm kind of used to the revolver, you know, kind of the Smith & Wesson sight picture where you've got a, a, a groove and, and a front sight. But that putting the ball in the basket, that really, really works for me. Regulars to the channel know that I have a a bit of a handicap, but that's kind of a side point. The Browning X-Point Defense 95 grain 380 is it is actually pretty powerful out of a three and a quarter inch barrel to compare what's on the box versus real life. That bear gel shot does replicate what you see on the back of the box. To get over 180 foot-pounds of energy from a standard pressure 380 factory ammo, that's pretty good. Thanks, folks. This is Dave for DDR. 
Have another great week. All 12, no issues.